My name is David Sawyer and I'm a forensic accountant. Uh, in addition to being a CPA, I'm also a certified fraud examiner and a licensed private investigator. The categories of fraud can be broken down into two broad universes. First, there's internal or occupational fraud, and then there's what is referred to as external or non-occupational fraud. Now, you can break those down. Internal fraud can be broken down into three subcategories, if you will. Asset misappropriation, which is theft. Financial statement fraud, which is like Enron, WorldCom fraud. And that's the overstatement of assets and income or the understatement of liabilities and expenses. And the third subcategory in internal fraud is bribery and corruption. That can include uh, kickbacks, conflicts of interest, uh, ex uh, economic extortion, and the like. External fraud is a little bit different. And what delineates that is that these types of fraud are, can be investigated. There are dedicated units that investigate external, non-occupational fraud, such as money laundering. It's investigated by the IRS. Securities fraud is investigated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. There's also banking and, uh, banking and financial uh, institution fraud, healthcare fraud. In those industries, they all have what are called special investigative units that are, are tasked and dedicated with investigating that type of fraud for those types of organizations and, and industries. Don't be afraid to ask questions and don't just settle for a textbook pat answer. Um, also, you know, make sure that you understand the principles and uh, of accounting and auditing standards, generally accepted auditing standards, if you're doing a financial statement audit and, and uh, follow the instruction and soak in the, uh, the supervision from the more experienced accountants that you're working with. From a forensic accounting standpoint and an expert witness standpoint, when I'm doing the work, I always am playing devil's advocate with myself. I'm always questioning the work that I'm doing because in any engagement that we take, there's the assumption or presumption that we may ultimately have to get up on the witness stand and raise our right hand and, uh, and swear to tell the, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. So I'm always questioning myself and making sure that I've got no stone unturned and I don't give the other side any type of ability to find a chink in my armor from the work that I'm doing. And, and that, that I found makes me more, a more effective expert witness if I'm questioning my work because nobody knows it better than me. Um, so that's a, a great piece of advice that I would get, um, give to people. I would, um, the thing that I would caution in forensic and investigative work um, for people to avoid is, I've heard people say that, well, why don't you just start with the end in mind and work back from there? That's not how a forensic accounting engagement or an investigation works. We follow the evidence objectively um, and let it take us where it leads to then, each, to, to then reach the conclusion. Um, the evidence speaks for itself and not only does that get us to the truth, which is that's, that's what our objective is, but it also um, maintains and sustains the, our credibility both as individuals and also for the profession as a whole. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and click the notification bell to be the first to view GSCPA videos. Follow us on other social media for even more society news.